The XY Advisor podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. All discussion is limited to publicly available information and should not be interpreted as legal, professional or financial advice. XY Advisor does not hold an AFS license nor provide any financial services. Before making investment decisions, you should obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. Ben Nash here. I'm a co-founder at XY Advisor and founder of financial advice business Pivot Wealth. My business baby I started from scratch a bit over six years ago. In that time, I have leveraged some of the learnings of the XY community to scale the business and become one of the better known financial advice businesses for high income accumulators. You can join me each Tuesday as I have the privilege of interviewing some amazing people where I'll sell Obviously, be able to uh, continue my personal journey to improve every aspect of my advice process, and hopefully, you can learn a few things on the journey as well. Jump over to xyadvisor.com if you haven't signed up already to share and learn from other advisors, or simply download the app. This episode is brought to you by Australian Retirement Trust, a fund that's more super for you and your clients. With more than 2 million members and over $200 billion under management, they have more access to super smart investments at home and abroad. They're committed to working with over 4,000 advisors and delivering a world of investment opportunities to help your clients live the retirement they want. Visit australianretirementtrust.com.au forward slash advisor. Include super savings and Super FUM and members at June 2022. Hey guys, Ben Nash from the XY Advisor team and today I'm here with Martin McGrath. Martin is a chartered accountant and principal financial advisor at Financial Edge Group. They're based on the central coast of New South Wales. Uh, Martin's been recognized for his awesome work in the industry, but last year was um, took out the IFA's practice principal of the year. So I'm keen to pick Martin's brain on you know what's going on in his business and what's driving the growth. Martin, thanks for joining us, mate. Perfect, Ben. Happy to. Man, I thought a good place to start, just for everyone listening along, can you step us through your journey into advice and how you've ended up where you are today? Yeah, perfect, mate. So I've been in the industry for about 20 years, started as an accountant, working at an accounting firm that did a little bit of financial planning on the side, um, realised I actually really enjoyed the financial planning side more than the accounting, believe it or not, uh, <laughs> and so stayed in and focused in that area. So I ended up finishing my accounting studies, getting a degree, becoming a chartered accountant, um, but kind of always had that passion for the financial planning side. Uh, and so kind of took a couple of roles that kept me in that space. And then about seven years ago, started my own business um, and started doing both because I didn't buy a book or anything, just started fresh and, and built from the ground up. So offered both services, accounting and financial planning. And then about three years ago, decided that for my business and the way the industry and the world was going, it was better to pick one or the other. So even though financial planning was only about 20% of my revenue, decided that that was the area that I wanted to focus on, sold off the accounting side and, and have grown a financial planning business from there. Yeah, nice. And you mentioned starting from scratch. In the early days, what was what was that like? What did you do? How did you tackle things? So I knew it was on the horizon. Uh, the place I was working at approached me and, and asked if I wanted to buy in. And I said, thanks, but no thanks. I want to do my own thing. And so it kind of forced me to jump a little bit as well as kind of being pushed, but they're really good about it. They actually asked if I could contract and, and do a bit of work for them as I transition across. But basically just over Christmas period, set up a website, set up a Facebook page and, and started from scratch um, with no clients, no ongoing revenue and grew from there and probably took about, I mean, went through various stages to try and make enough to pay for an office space, make enough to put food on the table, et cetera, and, and it grew pretty quick to the point where I told them I didn't have time to contract back to them anymore uh, and then continue to grow from there to get some office space, start to bring on a staff member um, and grow the business to where it is today. Yeah, nice. And where did your clients come from in the early days? Yeah, that was kind of all a bit daunting and scary, but uh, basically through friends and family is, is starting out uh, and then it kind of referrals from there. So had a big marketing plan of joining different referral groups and making a name in the community, all that kind of stuff. But just started um, talking to some kind of friends. I knew they had a businesses. They knew that I did financial planning. Their mum and dad wanted to retire, come and talk to me, need some life insurance, got married, got a kid, bought a house, all that kind of stuff because mm. we offered a bit of everything. And so it meant that that diversity had 
the client could come in and we could offer and service a lot of things for them. And then kind of a, that built to a base where I started getting people that I didn't know where they'd come from. Oh, I've heard about good news from this person who's been working for a while or whatever. And, um, and then the guy actually got people from the public and Google reviews and all that kind of stuff. And then a couple of years ago, focused on really building that presence. They've done plenty of videos and education, et cetera, that, that we get inquiries from everywhere now. Oh, it's great to see, mate. And I think it's for, for a lot of people in the XY community, you know, starting starting out is always the scariest part. I know for me is the same as well that I knew advice. I knew how to be an advisor, but um, that getting the clients and getting that early momentum is um, is scary. But thankfully, when you're in the very early days, you, you don't need a lot of clients to you know, uh, like you say, put put food on the table, um, and then you do good work, and it and it just grows from there. So it's great to see. What have been some of the biggest shifts for you over the the seven years that you've been in business? Yeah, and probably some themes I hinted at through there. So basically, opened the doors and and offered everything to everybody. So if someone wanted a tax return done for one hundred fifty dollars, I'd do that. If someone wanted a life insurance policy in place and a commission only basis, and I got five hundred fifty dollars and did all the work in the SOA for that, to full-blown retirement planning, to people setting up businesses and companies and GST and all that kind of stuff, which I had the skill set um, to be across all of that, but realised very quickly that, that I was spreading myself very thin to try and offer all to everyone. And so kind of got, or then was like, let me get some staff to help me do all this and continue to grow. And once I hit a certain revenue market, it, everything would be fine and, and the business would be looking after itself, et cetera. But then still, I remember a day that, which is a very diverse day, I think I helped someone get an income protection policy in the morning, then two hours later, helped someone else apply for Centrelink, then helped someone set up a family trust and taught them how to use Zero and do buzzers, uh, and then had an international GST question later in the same afternoon that took an hour and a half of research to figure out. And while that was a very diverse day and enjoyable, kind of went, okay, well, it's hard to build a system, it's hard to train staff, and we've got such a variety of offerings being made. Mm. Uh, and so through that kind of learning, started to work around, okay, well, I need to, to do things a bit different, work a bit smarter. About the same time, I started working with some business coaches and the kind of continual reading, listening to podcasts, reading books, um, decided that I needed to try and streamline a little bit and then... Um, Kind of figure out where does my passion lie and did a bit of soul searching and speak to some other mentors and and kind of made that focus that financial planning is where i wanted to be and that took oh, maybe a few months to come to that decision and then a few months more to figure out what that process was going to look like and then the plan was we'll sell the accounting side of the business it was big enough that it was it needed to be looked after it wasn't just to send three or four clients away it was it, it was to be sold and handed over so I figured out who i was going to do that with and that person I sold the business to is a key referrer now for our financial planning. So it was a bit of a partnership in that space, worked through the process to hand that off. And then as part of that redesign, okay, well, if I'm going to remove a large chunk of my business, I want to replace that. Um, and then who do I want to replace that with? What does our ideal client look like? And then focused on building things and systems in that space is who we want to attract, what do they look like, where do they hang out, what are their needs? Uh, and then making sure that we could attract them and service them. And that really helped the business grow from what was just myself in a little office with no support staff at the start um, to now we're a team of eight and then looking to continue to grow on the Central Coast. And what was the impact of that of that change? Like, did it did it happen quickly? Did clients, like, did you get cut through with clients quickly? Yeah, for sure. Like, I mean, it, it seems quick now. And at the time, it was still relatively quick, I think. Um, it was daunting because, yeah, as I mentioned, the accounting side was 70 75% of the business um, to remove that and go, okay, we'll need to replace that. But looking at the numbers, we replaced that easily within 12 months um, mm -hmm. from the financial planning side. And I think it just happened quickly, but organically, we kind of, as it was transitioning out, it started to flow back in because that accounting handover still took the better part of six or nine months and as that kind of was on its way out we had in one inquiry one week and then two the next week and then it continued to grow momentum from there to the point that i looked back and went hold on how did how do i try and do all that while i was doing this at the same time <laughs> um yeah. and if i didn't make that decision beforehand i would have been forced to make that decision well before now anyway so 
bit of good luck, a bit of good planning um, to kind of help that happen. And yeah, the impact meant that financially we're in a better, stronger position. The business is a larger size, but also just I think we're providing a much better product and service to the client because we're focusing on one area. Our systems are designed for people in that area. Our time and expertise and training is all focusing in that one area. I'm not having to worry and, and be across all the different changes happening in, in different industries, accounting mm. and financial planning, but also within financial planning, we don't do any insurance anymore. So I don't need to be, well, I like to be across some of the changes, but the finer detail of which product provider is better on this new income protection policy, that's not what expertise is now. I'll refer that out to someone who specialises in that space as well. Yeah, it's, I find for us that when you specialise in working with one type of client that you become an expert in their problems pretty quickly because you're constantly seeing all of the different things that um, the opportunities, the good and the bad, where things can go wrong and then you can stop people from you know, falling into some of those common pitfalls whereas, as you say, when you're dealing with different different types of people all the time, then you'd sort of need to be a bit more surface level and you're not getting the same volume of exposure there as well. So I think it's good from a business perspective. It's also good for the clients, as you say, it allows you to deliver a better service for, for those for those people as well. Martin, yeah, what have sure. been the biggest challenges for you? I was going to say, like, what, what have been the biggest challenges for you on that journey? Um, I mean, various ways. That one was is coming and making that decision. It's not an easy decision to make when I built that business or built that nest egg to decide to depart from that. Um, but it was kind of you know, sunken cost theory or sunken time theory that, yes, it had taken mm-hmm. a lot of time to build that, but it was more about where I was going and what the future looked like. And that was not baggage that I was, not that it was baggage by itself, but it was going to be a distraction to hold on to that. Even I had some conversations with clients and went, okay, so that's fine. But like, we're the exception, aren't we? You're definitely going to keep us. You're definitely going to do I'm like, well, well, no, because that doesn't, that's not fair to you, but also not fair to the other clients I want to focus on. So that was a big decision from there, making sure that I could entrust a, another provider or another kind of professional look after that. And not mm. just that accounting side of the business, but also when we decided that we're not doing insurance, making sure that I, if I was going to refer friends and family to some other professional, knowing that I had a high level of confidence in what they were going to provide as well. And I think we're all smart enough to know, but it's still hard to go, well, no, I can do a better job than someone else, or oh, I'm not sure I can trust this with someone else. I don't know exactly who they are. So it's important to take the time to make those decisions about who you're partnering in and who you're trusting with if you are going to refer existing clients away or whatever that looks like that they're being looked after because that means you can do that with more confidence and not make exceptions around oh okay we can still do that you can be we can still do that offering for you you've got to be Mm. fair to yourself and fair to those clients and then as a result of that has meant that we've had a a lot more business growth than potentially i'd planned when i set out five or seven years ago the plan was i know to have a little business, be self-employed, get some income, but kind of work for myself. I still do work for myself, but the the owner of the business. But to the point now where we've got staff, we've got advisors in the business, what comes with that is business of a certain size, need systems and processes, we need support layers, we need HR, we need payroll, all that kind of stuff that, that I didn't need at the start because it was just myself or myself and one staff member. So there are challenges that come the challenges that are worthwhile and rewarding and setting that foundation for many years to come. Totally. I think uh, if you're anything like me, the appeal when you start a business, you think, oh, yeah, I'll, um, I'll start a business and then I can work from anywhere and be flexible and I can just, you know, have the lifestyle and it'd be great. And then you push hard because you want to get some growth and you want to make sure that it's a success and then uh, things start growing and then you realise it comes with a different like you say, layer of, of challenges. You've got all the team things, the stuff that, um, o- you know, occupies your your bandwidth as well. And, um, yeah, the Corey, I was just talking to Corey Wassell on the podcast a little while back and um, I was talking about one of the things that was frustrating me at that point in time. And he's like, yeah, but he goes, but that's the, the obstacle is the way. It's like that's the fun part of doing it as well. So uh, this is a challenge, but they're good challenges to to have. Yeah, for sure. And I think even on that, there was, I was catching up, I was speaking to someone before and talking about a, sh- a shift in mindset. I was at a PD day earlier in the year and 
some were speaking, talking about that business growth and that shift in mindset, different type of business that they were talking about. No longer do they wake up thinking about some of their client problems or, or what to fix with their clients. They wake up thinking about the systems and the processes they want to improve for their business. And, and mm. I think that that mind shift has changed in terms of, yes, I'm definitely still focused on our clients, looking after many of our clients and the principal advisor for our clients, but I get excited as much about what's the new software or technology or an efficient way to do this process. Let's document it so that we can replicate it and help many more clients and people in the future in the business kind of thing. And so it's not just the fixing the client problem, but also being excited about that systems and processes as well along the way. Mm, absolutely. As a process nut, I'm, I'm with you on that one. Martin, you mentioned uh, that transition from you being basically the only person in the business to then bring on a team and then particularly with bringing on advisors into the business how how have you tackled that? Obviously, it's a bit of a challenge with transitioning relationships and um, as being the you know going from the principal where you're the only advisor in the business. How have you found that? Yeah, definitely, and that is another challenge, but another exciting thing. The business has grown to the point now, and and the path we're on, and, and given it's hard to get advisors, it's myself and two other advisors in the business at the moment. And that's the building for where we're going. And we're, I still say, relatively new in that process, but, but coming up to, to a year and two years with different advisors in the business. Uh, and it's going really well. I'm really excited about what we've done so far and equally excited about where we're going. But it definitely comes with challenges because it was even at the point that all the website just spoke about Martin, all our templates spoke about Martin and your advisor Martin to the point where that's now changed and templated to be generalised to talk speaking about your insert advisor name here and that's a process mm. by itself it's bringing those advisors into our business and doing things our way we've invested a lot of time and, and effort into our expertise and systems and are very proud of what we've created there and, and everyone's got their own personality and we want to help them grow within that system but the way we onboard clients the way we look after clients our ongoing service arrangement how we service our clients is very specialized and focused and client focused and so making sure that, that they're across all of that. And and the way that well, I prefer to do that for our business is, is not hire someone who's got 20 years under the belt and ready to go and wants to be in front of hundreds of clients and, and converting and look, doing all that kind of stuff. Is, is we're brought in client advisors who are very technically orientated, want to be advisors, et cetera, but have kind of come through that associate advisor, my right-hand person type of thing. So very kind of subtle approach where they've done a lot of the, I suppose, shadow advisor, associate advisor type of work over the last year and a bit where they've kind of helped all the strategy stuff, do the technical stuff, be in front of the clients, speak in front of the clients. But for the first period of time, my name is still on the SOA. If the clients would generally say that Martin or the team is my financial advisor to help them build that confidence and trust and process um, in our business, in that mm. space. And, and we're at the point now where they're getting to the level where they want to continue to grow and I want them to continue to grow. And so we're going to do that in a few different ways where they're going to take a lot on a lot of the new clients coming in. There may be the, the benefit. We haven't figured this all out yet of transitioning some of, I suppose, my clients in inverted commas across to them where they've worked with the client now for two years. The client knows who they are, vice versa. And that may be a, a nice transition to have. Um, and all through acquisition and bringing on more clients um, that way that, that they can be assigned to those advisors in that space. So it's a it's a worthwhile process. I think it's, yes, we're an advice business, but, but really the, we're a relationship business and you want to look after clients in that case that the client, yes, they're working with the business, but doesn't want to be handed around to a new advisor every year. They want to make sure the advisor they're working with is looking after them and knows the situation knows the technical stuff, but also they can have a chat with and, and know the history in that respect. So we're doing that gently and slowly. And it may be that I may still be the face and be in some of those meetings, um, but not really look after the client behind the scenes because we've got other advisors who can do that. Yeah, I've found for us that, and I've had this conversation with a number of clients that I've looked after um, in the past, that as your business grows, you sort of you have an increasing level as we were talking about of different things that are 
occupying and requiring your attention to support the team and the business in the best way. And it means that your attention is split. So I think you do sort of reach, I've found for me that you reach a tipping point where it's actually better for one of the other advisors to be the advisor for the clients because it means that the client is their sole focus and then they benefit from that focus more than someone that's needing to deal with that you know hr process that needs to happen or that process that needs to be tinkered with or that tech solution that needs to happen as well and i think that people as as you say it's definitely a relationship business not easy and it's really important that any sort of transition is managed really well but i think people ultimately pretty reasonable and understand that at least i've found from from my experience and recognize that they do have that potential they know that they can always talk to me like i'm sure your clients could always talk to you if there was a need for them or a real desire for them to do that but then they're benefiting from, from sole focus of of having a dedicated advisor as well ultimately ends up being a good thing as much as we're fearful of it um when it when it is happening as well yeah for sure um, you mentioned some of the changes there. W- what are some of the things, though, that haven't changed for you guys? Yeah, that's a good question. And, and may, it's maybe hard to, to self-reflect upon that. And I don't have anyone else here to ask that question to. But I think for us to find the, I don't know, the heart of the business or the core values of the business, um, one of the big feedback or big focus bits I got back at the start when I started the business was we are plain English very try to keep things simple, not overcomplicate stuff. Um, we're big believers in education. The more you understand something, the more you can have trust and believe in it. Um, and that's from the start of the business through to now. So on our client process, on our client journey, we get the clients involved. Yes, they're paying for us for our expertise, but it's not smoke and mirrors. It's not, okay, he gives the information, we'll go away and come back to you with, it's this fancy little document that's going to solve your life. We bring clients along the way and it can take them through that process to empower them so that we're making those decisions together um, in that process. And I think within that, I've been doing now for probably coming up to three or four years, regular videos and education, and I'm not alone in this space, yourself and many other advisors, that we get a really a lot of positive feedback from clients about that, talking about simple topics or just reiterating things ideas that are general because if a client comes in if it's a new client particularly but even when it's existing clients that maybe work with us for five years we're in a meeting we talk about some concepts hey you're now eligible to think all the downside of the contribution here's what it is but then we've got a four minute or a six minute video talking about that at a generic level that we can send to them in our follow-up paperwork that a week later they can go back and look at that again because they might not have been able to take it all at the same time. So having that kind of material that people can come back to, it's forever green. We can share with clients across the board, prospects and new, and, and existing clients uh, is a big piece of that. And, and we get that feedback from clients is that one of the reasons I like working to us is because that they can understand what's going on. It's not just technical spreadsheets and boring numbers, which a lot of what we do can be in some regard. Totally. And I think you're you bang on there that there's a lot to take in when you're doing any sort of financial planning, whether it's a brand new client or someone going through a review or someone that you've been that has been a client for a number of years. They can only take in so much at once, like we can if you're learning something new as well, that I, I found those resources incredibly helpful that people can refer back. And I think that on-demand style of of education around advice is um is a real value add for the people, as you say, ultimately giving them more confidence in in what they're doing and the decisions that they have made as well. What what's coming up for you guys? What are you guys focused on at the moment? So I mean, like plenty of advisors, there's there's plenty happening in the world uh, in our business, in particular that that continual growth of of the advisors is a big focus for us over the next four months. And as part of that. We're up to come up to seven years and then certain milestones to the business and, and we haven't acquired any business or any business or any clients yet, but we but we will be doing so in this next period of time. And so that's a new challenge for us as a business. It's an exciting challenge. We've grown organically to this point, but but there's a kind of a, a large opportunity that makes a lot of sense to us on the horizon to kind of not partner, but kind of work closely with an accounting firm who's got a lot of clients that they want us to look after for them. Um, which which will be classed as an acquisition, 
in part of that for financial planning clients. So that's that's a big challenge, a big focus for us that provides a lot, a lot of opportunity for the advisors in our business, but us as a team generally um, to look after these clients and service them and embed them into our kind of systems and processes, our relationships. And so that's a new challenge for us that, that's on the horizon in the near future, which we're excited about, but also feel, I mean, I know it's always changing all the time, but I feel now we've built a lot of systems and processes that the business is at a maturity point where we can we can run a lot more smoother now. We've been through a whole bunch of rule changes and compliance changes with dealer groups and various things that, that I'm really confident in the team we've built, the systems we've got, the processes that um, we can hum along nicely. I know there'll be some more changes and curveballs coming up because that's the world yeah. we live in and the industry we live in. Um, mm-hmm. But I'm really confident about that, that, where we're at as a business has got the great foundation for what's coming up and, and likely more opportunities. I know there's lots of challenges out there in our business and many other businesses as well, but I do think that the, the industry's got a real positive future um, and we're in a position to to grow with that for sure. Yeah, totally. I think the changes that have happened in the recent past, while not perfect, um, have really pushed things in the right direction and more c- confidence from consumers, um, more dedicated people within the industry that are fully committed because of some of the, the hurdles that you've got to jump over now. Uh, and I think, yeah, it's a great time to, to be an advisor. Sounds like some exciting times ahead for, for you guys, uh, which, is, which is great to hear. Martin, my last question for you is uh, if you could go back to yourself day one of the business and give yourself one piece of advice, what would it be? It's a tough one because it, like many things, you don't want to change things because you learn from many things. But I suppose, mm. um, I suppose I'll, I'll answer it if you get, I'll, I'll answer it with two things if you let me to. One of them, I, I took the advice and, and the other one, I'd give the advice. I had a good friend, another business, a good friend and business mentor kind of in some respect and he suggested from day one, don't name the business after yourself. Don't name it Martin McGrath Financial Plan because at some point in the future, you may want to grow beyond you. And I was really hesitant about that because I was like, no, no, I don't want to grow big. I, I'm happy to be about me. It'd be a good branding thing. It's Martin McGrath. People know my name. They'll connect it. They will find me very easy on Google. But I took his advice and I didn't. I named it a more generic kind of name that that could mean that we could bring in other people in the future and other advisors. Um, and and even after two years, I went, oh, I think he's wrong. I should change it just to my name. I don't think I'm going to grow beyond me. But I didn't. And uh-huh. that's definitely something I'm glad I... I took that advice and stuck to it because otherwise I'd be going through a name change by now for sure. So that's advice I suppose that I took that I did accept from day one that um, that I think is important. And everyone's different, but often a lot of people think, oh, I won't grow too big. I'll keep it small and simple and end up changing names at some point. Mm. The, the second part would be is if I was starting again today kind of thing, I love the niching bit. I love just being specific, um, who we want to work with, how we can work with them, the the marketing messages, the processes, everything is gold into that person. When they see it, they read it, they feel like you're talking to them. We got there and I'm very glad we got there and I wouldn't be where we are if we didn't do all that stuff and didn't have those offerings in the past. But I think in the world we live in and we, our business in particular and many businesses, we don't need 10,000 clients. We only need mm. a certain amount of clients. And no matter how niche you are, and you can be very niche, but you'll be able to find enough clients in that area in most cases. And or if it is a low number, you're charging the right premium to still have a very profitable business. So I think that would be the tip is that, that pick the niche that either you're best at, you really love, you you know there's a focus on um, and really dial in in that area. That's been a big game changer for our business from when we made that shift. I love it. I think if you if you're not talking to someone, you're talking to no one. And uh, I think I've been fortunate to chat to a lot of great businesses through this podcast and just through exposure in the industry. And it seems that the ones that are doing the best are the ones that have gone all in on that. So definitely some wise words there, Martin. Thank you so much for sharing your story, mate. Really, really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, pumped to to see the next chapter for you guys. Very happy to. Cheers, Ben. <laughs>